Now at five, how grant funding is letting students in Miami learn about aviation. Plus, the McDonald County School District unveils new renovations to one of its elementary schools. And Vice President Kamala Harris announces her first major policy proposal, while former President Donald Trump receives backlash for his comments about the Medal of Honor. I'm Willie James Inman in Washington with details. The four states most watched news starts now. Students at Miami High School will benefit from funding towards their aerospace engineering program. This is KOAM News at 5. I'm Tanya Bach. The Oklahoma Department of Aerospace and Aeronautics invested a total of $2 million to support the education of future pilots and engineers. Miami High School received $9,000 and will use it for school trips and the purchase of drones and other lab materials so students can gain hands-on experience with aviation. You're in Ottawa County and you don't, you know, you're not around an international airport or, or airplanes and things. And, and so the funding would, you know, give us that opportunity to kind of whet these kids' appetites on things that we don't see here. Bland hopes this will inspire the future generation of engineers and pilots in Miami. McDonald County School District today showed off new facilities at Southwest City Elementary. They hosted a ribbon cutting for two new classrooms and new bathrooms. Funding for the renovations comes from a $21.5 million bond issue passed by voters in 2022. Officials say it will help with space constraints. Double, double classes for each grade, you know, I mean, I think they're going to have maybe 48 in second grade this year, so two 22 classes, you know, so uh, having the extra space is, is going to be nice, you know, and the larger classroom, because the old buildings, some of them are small, you know, the old classrooms. So. This project is part of a larger district-wide improvement plan that includes storm shelters, office additions, and remodels at various schools across the district. McDonald County Schools are also excited to announce the return of the Freshman Academy. The program brings students across the district to equip them with the tools and knowledge they need in order to confidently navigate the transition to high school. Students get the opportunity to familiarize themselves with their teachers and their classes. The district decided to do this as a way to maybe alleviate some of those anxieties, give those freshmen a chance to be in the building when it's a little less crowded, uh, get to maybe see some familiar faces and just makes that first day, uh, gives them a little bit more confidence coming in that first day. The district is expecting around 200 freshmen to attend this year's event. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us now with a first look at weather. Yeah, we've been watching some additional hit and miss storms popping up over the past couple hours, and we do actually have a severe thunderstorm watch. Oklahoma, southwest Missouri, south of I-44 into northwestern Arkansas until 11 p.m. Over the next few hours, I do think we're going to have some hit and miss storms, which you can see kind of northeastern Oklahoma into Benton County, but not widespread by any means. But any storms that do become severe, the main threat is going to be gusty winds and large hail. Then later on tonight, We'll see some clusters of showers and thunderstorms trying to get going late evening into the overnight hours. So here's 9, 10, 11 p.m. Scattered thunderstorms, not as strong, but it could be a little bit on the loud side. So overall, I don't think we're going to have much in the way of severe weather, but we are going to have scattered thunderstorms tonight. We're going to be looking at that plus your weekend forecast coming up here in a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. Well, in the battleground state of North Carolina, Vice President Kamala Harris announced how she plans to tackle corporate price, price gouging if elected president. But former President Donald Trump is claiming her proposals are price fixing while calling her a communist. Willie James Inman has the latest from Washington. In her first policy speech since becoming the Democratic Party's presidential nominee, Vice President Kamala Harris acknowledged the toll of inflation on America's middle class and proposed what she calls an opportunity economy. An economy where everyone can compete and have a real chance to succeed. She's calling for the first ever federal ban on price gouging for food and groceries, new policies to spur home building, including offering up to $25,000 for first time home buyers to use as a down payment, and an expansion of the child tax credit, providing as much as $6,000 to families with newborn children. 
In a statement, former President Donald Trump said the proposals amount to price fixing, calling her comrade Kamala and a full communist. Many people At a news conference state, Thursday, he blamed months. Harris and Democratic and legislation for state, rising costs. She cast a tie-breaking votes that caused record inflation. She cast the votes. Price gouging is already illegal, and Harris's proposals get mixed reviews from economists. They would also need congressional approval. Trump, meantime, is now facing fresh backlash for praising a wealthy donor at an event Thursday night. He compared the Congressional Medal of Honor to the Presidential Medal of Freedom that he bestowed upon Miriam Adelson in 2018. It's actually much better because everyone gets the Congressional Medal of Honor that soldiers, they're either in very bad shape because they've been hit so many times by bullets or they're dead. She gets it and she's a healthy, beautiful woman. Trump's running mate defended him Friday. I don't think him complimenting and saying a nice word about a person who received the Presidential Medal of Freedom is in any way denigrating those who received military honors. Trump's campaign suggested his comments were misinterpreted. Woodley James Inman, CBS News, the White House. The Secret Service announced it will now provide protection for its former director who resigned last month following the attempted assassination on former President Trump. Sources tell CBS News hostile individuals have approached her. Well, the country has a new national monument. President Biden signed a proclamation establishing the site of the Springfield, Illinois race riot as a national monument. It preserves some of the land where a horrific attack took place on the black community over three days in 1908, just blocks from Abraham Lincoln's home. A white mob lynched two black men and destroyed homes and businesses. A tragedy spurred civil rights leaders to form the NAACP just a few months later. Still ahead, a warning from health officials. Millions of Americans are turning to cheaper Ozempic alternatives. I'm Bradley Blackburn with why the FDA is now warning about accidental overdoses from some weight loss drugs. Plus, one new wastewater research shows about this summer's wave of COVID-19. Topping today's Health Watch, the U.S. is in the midst of a significant COVID wave. The CDC updated its wastewater dashboard today. Experts say it confirms viral activity levels are the highest they've been during a summer surge since the CDC began publicly tracking such data in January of 2022. Researchers believe the coronavirus variants have mutated enough to escape the ability of current antibodies to quickly neutralize them. Well, the FDA wants to help Americans consume less sodium by lowering sodium levels in processed foods. The agency has proposed guidelines with voluntary targets that could help Americans cut their average daily sodium intake by about 20%. Before 2021, consumer intake of sodium averaged about 3,400 milligrams per day. If finalized, the FDA's voluntary target would be 2750 milligrams. The use of weight loss drugs like Ozempic and Wegovy has boomed in recent years, with sales of the top drugs reaching $15 billion in 2023. But off-brand compounded versions of the medication are also growing fast, and with them, a chance of complications. Bradley Blackburn explains how the FDA is now warning about overdoses. The, the ads are everywhere. To lose 15% of your body weight. Many companies promising weight loss drugs for way less money than name brand prescriptions. For as little as $1.99 per month, including options compounded in the USA. For Becky Chairs, the deal was too good to pass up. $295 a month or something. Let's see how it goes. The family therapist says she got a prescription for compounded semaglutide online. But when she received her first shipment from a compounding pharmacy, she misunderstood the instructions and accidentally overdosed. My first dose was really supposed to be like 0.5 units, like really tiny dose. And I gave myself five times the dose. At like nine o'clock at night, I was going, man, I'm feeling sick. Because name brands like Ozempic are on the FDA's drug shortage list, compounded versions of semaglutide are allowed on the market. Compounding pharmacists can alter or combine medications and tailor them to individual patients. But recently, the FDA put out a warning those compounded drugs often don't come pre-measured. They've received reports of hospitalizations from overdoses with symptoms like nausea and severe vomiting that can last a week. 
CBS News medical contributor Dr. Celine Gounder says compounded drugs come with many unknowns. They have not been safety tested. We don't know if they're as effective as the prescription drug. So it's really hard to say, um, is what you're getting really equivalent or not? We just don't know. Chairs is still taking the medicine, pleased with her results, but she's noticed dosage can change from one shipment to the next. The type is so small, all of them, I can barely read it. Absolutely make sure you're doing the right dose. A warning for the millions now turning to these drugs. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. The FDA says patients should talk with their doctor or compounding pharmacy to understand how to measure and administer the intended dose. And compounded drugs should only be used when an FDA approved a medicine is unavailable. That's a look at today's health news. A little later, we'll have some tips to stretch your dollar as kids get ready to head back to school. Plus, we're going to be dodging some scattered thunderstorms this evening. We'll take a look at that. Well, of course, it turned out to be a hot one for us today. Now we're watching for scattered thunderstorms as we go through the evening into the overnight hours. It looks pretty good. Nice shot. This is Indigo Sky Casino and Resort. Indigo is just outside of Seneca, Missouri. We have those cumulus clouds and those mid and upper level clouds across the region. Severe thunderstorm watch in effect along and south of I-44, Missouri into Arkansas and then northeastern parts of Oklahoma. It doesn't include north of I-44 and into southeastern Kansas. We are going to have hit and miss storms. The greater threat for anything strong to severe will be in the yellow as we go through the next few hours. So we do have hit and miss storms. You can see these guys popping up in our southern counties. Those will have the potential to produce some uh, gusty winds and also some large hail. Plus, we're going to watch this cluster as it drops in to southeastern Kansas over the next couple hours. So as of right now, Hit and miss storms. If you're heading down toward Grand Beaver Lake or Tabor Rock, you are going to have to deal with some of these storms. And then if we look back toward the north, you can see those showers and thunderstorms trying to get into Yates Center just to the west of Iola. Hit and miss storms next several hours, and then we'll get more widespread showers and thunderstorms later on tonight, especially uh, late evening into the overnight hours. All right, dome of high pressure out toward New Mexico, so we get these waves that kind of rotate through behind this system across the northern parts of Minnesota. So those two combined are giving us those hit and miss storms across the region. Let's go through the evening hours. I think our storms kind of tick down 7, 8 o'clock and then tick back up 9, 10, 11 o'clock. Hit and miss storms across the region dropping through. Here's about 11 p.m. Let's continue. Here's about midnight. Scattered thunderstorms through the region. Still hit and miss storms lasting into the morning hours and then finally as we get into tomorrow morning, any showers and thunderstorms out there will start to dissipate. So rainfall, we got to see where those heavier storms kind of set up. But the areas that do get thunderstorms, you'll pick up a half an inch to an inch. But there are going to be a lot of areas at the same time that don't get any rain. Slide back through the 90s, 80s into the 70s. Right now, most of us are sitting into lower 90s, but we still have some triple digit heat once you get into our southern counties. 93 outside. Winds are fairly light, visibility is good, but our heat index is up there, especially, look at this, 108 in Grove, 108 in Jay Commerce, a heat index of 104 degrees. So of course, we're gonna have those hit and miss storms for us tonight. By morning, a couple random storms to start the day, then partly sunny skies, mid 80s by noon. Once we get into the afternoon, humidity is gonna be a little bit lower. It looks like high temps into the lower 90s. Tomorrow night, mild. We drop back up our 60s, some storms off to our east. And then by Sunday, a few hit and miss storms late in the day. Temperatures not too bad. Most of us right around 90, but you can see some scattered showers and thunderstorms working back in as we head into Sunday night and then also into Monday morning. 94 tomorrow, 91 on Sunday, hit and miss storms. But overall, not a bad weekend forecast. 87 on Monday, 87 on Tuesday. So we do drop back into the 80s and then a slow warming trend as we go through next week into next weekend. All right. I like to see a little 80s on there. That's nice. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, keep it under 100 every day. I'm working on it. All right, thanks, Doug. Well, coming up, TikTok delivers its latest blow in the battle between the social media app and the U.S. government. Topping today's Consumer Watch, TikTok is fighting back again as its future 
still remains uncertain in the United States. The social media platform is denying storing sensitive American user data in China. That's something the U.S. Justice Department has accused the Chinese-based company of doing. In a new court filing, TikTok urged the federal appeals court to block a law that could result in a nationwide ban of the app. Around 50 million K-12 students are heading back to class, and parents across the country are buying school supplies. A new survey shows 10% of parents expect to go into debt to pay for those items. Nancy Chen has tips to stretch your dollars. For parents, back to school means back to spending. Since 2016, average household spending on back to school has increased 30 percent, with families expected to shell out more than $870 in 2024. What are parents facing this year? Parents everywhere are certainly excited for their kids to go back to school, but the cost of all of those things you need to buy for your kids really adds up. Sarah Rathner is a personal finance expert with NerdWallet. When you're already stretched thin, you're going to have to make some hard decisions. But there are also easy ways to save. Check out so-called Buy Nothing groups on Facebook, Nextdoor, and the Buy Nothing app. Those are groups on social media. You can request if anybody has an item your child needs that they don't need anymore. So you're saying it's completely free? It is, yes. It, people are giving of their own abundance. And if you can't find what you're looking for for free, there are online platforms to buy items used, like Swappa, OfferUp, and Facebook Marketplace. Don't forget to shop around. Target, Walmart, Staples, and Amazon are all offering 50 cent deals on different basics, like notebooks, crayons, pencils, and glue. Staples will also give you $10 off a purchase of $30 or more if you trade in older items like binders or backpacks as part of their recycling program. For kids' uniforms, polos are $7 or less and skirts $12 or less at Target, Old Navy, and the Children's Place. Check out JCPenney, Walmart, and Amazon for shoes under 20 bucks. With a little homework, you can get an A-plus in economics this back-to-school shopping season. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. There are several organizations that families can turn to for help. IN, ICNA Relief and the Salvation Army are two national groups that assist low-income families with back to school. Many local churches and libraries operate drives. Well, the rental market is slowing down, which means many tenants are now being given incentives to sign a lease. With rising vacancy rates, some landlords are offering perks like free parking, or weeks of free rent. A third of rental listings on Zillow now offer an incentive to rent. A year ago, that number was 25%. The shift is being driven in part by a building boom for apartments. Well, some homeowners are rushing to refinance their mortgages now that the rates have dropped. This week, the standard 30-year fixed rate mortgage is up slightly from the prior week. Last week, mortgage applications surged 17%. The surge was driven by homeowners seeking to refinance, which was up by 35 percent, according to Mortgage Bankers Association. Well, final check of the forecast is next. Up next on the CBS Evening News, a bus driver goes the extra mile in the name of kindness. And then on KOAM News at 6, we'll hear more about new aviation education classes available to students in Miami. Plus, two bikers from Joplin are named in a Kansas City grand jury indictment related to several armed assaults. And high school softball season kicks off early in Quapa, Oklahoma, as they host Grove. Stay with us for the CBS Evening News and then KOAM News at 6. More on those storms coming Yeah, up. some hit miss storms as we go through the evening hours, especially in our southern counties, and then some scattered thunderstorms later on this evening into the overnight hours into tomorrow morning. Most of the day looks fine, 94, 91 on Sunday, a few hit miss storms late, and then again on Monday, but temperatures cooling down a bit, slowly cooling down as we go through the weekend into early next week. And that is good news. Well, thanks for joining us. The CBS Evening News is next. And of course, we'll be right back here for KOAM News at 6. We'll see you then. Let's make it a great evening and an even better tomorrow.